generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverages. A nice cup of lemon tea. So in a previous couple of videos of Airships, we were once again messing around with some guided missiles, which is probably not the right terminology to use when referring to highly dangerous tactical weaponry. But nevertheless, if we go over to our design and fight bit here, over to the building editor, you can see that we managed to make a rough uh, layout of a Titan II silo, which was not that effective. Obviously, people have suggested things like adding flak to it, but the whole idea was to make something that is based in real life so that's its only weapon job done um yes version 2 will probably have more armor we'll probably have some flak on it and it'll probably make a fairly decent structure also if we go over to our landship editor and open the design we made the new castle which is again a sort of very slow moving fairly heavily armored there you go but quite a good armor on that one uh, platform for launching these guided missiles but again cost it's eight grand so it's quite expensive for what it does i think version Version 2s are required for both and I think it would probably benefit from that and indeed maybe even work. <laughs> However, we're not going to do that in this episode. We're going to go to the airship editor this time and actually make uh, something that is, uh, well in the game's namesake, sort of an airship and we're going to be focusing on aircraft. Now, I've always said well, since aircraft came out, that they were prone to being destroyed very, very quickly. You would start the fight, they would immediately launch, and then it doesn't really matter what you're versing, but we're mainly referring to static structures here. But anything with a flak can would immediately take them out, and then you're left with a poorly armed, poorly armoured, expensive carrier that has no planes on it. However, with the addition of the aircraft command deck, we can now issue specific commands and detailed commands to aircraft. So specifically, we can tell them not to launch. So we can sit at the back and keep them on board until such time as the opponent doesn't have as much weaponry to take out all of the planes. So that's what we're going to build. I'm still wary on how effective this may be because already with the aircraft command deck and a maintenance bay we're talking 838 generic units of currency by the way the maintenance bay is a large machine shop specializing in repairing and rearming aircraft which gives us 100 percent aircraft repair speed and rearmed also 25 percent faster as well it's slightly flammable too so it's got that going for it. But the whole point is this is going to be very, very expensive. We also now have a biplane hook as well. So the idea is to make a, well, a slow, because I really don't care about the speed in this thing. And I also don't care about the service ceiling. As long as it flies, that's all I'm really bothered about. But a slow moving, fairly heavily armoured carrier with biplane hooks on the bottom. And then probably on the top, maybe some bombers. In terms of cost, I really don't know. If it's under five grand, I'd be happy, but I have a feeling it's gonna to be too expensive regardless of what we do, but that will not stop us. And let's, like I say, focus on what we're going to do here. So there's our bridge there. We know we're gonna to have to have one of these command decks. We also want a maintenance bay, but I don't know where. And you might be thinking it's a bit of a strange choice, but we're actually gonna focus on weapons before anything else, because, as as I said the whole point in design is to make sure that we can bring in our aircraft but only safely launch them when the opponent has lost some weapons so we need to think about what options we have to destroy the weapons now immediately we could go oh let's place a guided missile on there no problem whatsoever but it's cost and obviously specifically uh, 1224 is far too expensive for this thing we could go with some aerial torpedoes external which are single use torpedoes and i was very tempted to do that however because of the like nature of the base where they can't line up it would mean like a very very pyramid -y type of design which is something we can't really afford and I think things like heavy cannons are uh, maybe the way forward which is pretty good but the range is an issue we need to sit back as much as possible so 1100 meters and the arc of fire is not great because we want this to be able to not just verse static structures also have this verse other airships so we are limited to what we can use and I think it comes down to a couple of things we could use and say look let's go with aerial torpedoes but again aerial torpedoes they have a minimum range and a very limited arc of fire and obviously travel time so versus other 
airships not so good. I honestly think the best course of action for us is to use the Suspendium Ray. Now it is quite expensive at 420 or 432. However, Arc of Fire is amazing. As you can see, there's the Arc of Fire there. It is pretty much 90 degrees. Actually, it's 170 degrees. Yes, yeah, so very good elevation and depression on the gun. Uh, piercing damage is 12 times 15 and the maximum accurate range is 3,300 meters. It does, however, require to unit, require a unit of call, which is going to be a bit of an issue. But that's going to be the weapon that we have on here. I was thinking about two, but then again, we're, we're probably over bloating the design. So we'll go for one Suspendium Ray, and let's have a look at the other things that we will need. So we do need uh, some Command and Crew, and we will use... There's an, we could have a Command Center, which is another... Another addition to the game, it allows you to issue commands 30% faster on all vessels. Now, I don't think that is, for the price of it, 428, a good choice for this design, but we certainly want a bridge, so I'm going to place a bridge in... I'm just going to place the, the tiles down and then we'll design it. There's an observation dome which increases weapon accuracy by 15%. That would be quite good, and I could place a dome on top of there. And how much is the dome, though? It is only 86, which is pretty good. The crow's nest doesn't stack with observation dome, so we're not going to have one of those, but I prefer the observation dome anyway. It's a shame it doesn't go centralised to that thing, which is a shame, but there you are. And we also have a telescope as well, which is 122, and that increases weapon accuracy by 30%, and... Yeah, we, that also does stack, I believe, telescope, it says, stacks with targeting computer, crow's nest, and the observation dome. So both of those do stack, but the problem is, we've only got one weapon, and we've spent almost, well, we've spent half of the weapon's cost, again, on just accuracy increasing uh, <laughs> systems. So the telescope is 122, and the observation dome is 86. So we've already spent over 200 on just accuracy increasing things when, to be fair, the rate is quite accurate anyway. We may go ahead and remove both of those, but let's put them in the design from the start. Over to resources then, and we do want to have a call store because this does require a unit of call. It requires a unit of call every six seconds, so we're going to place that there. In fact, what I might do is place that there. In between that, we will have a fire point to make sure that we can put all of this out. And our propulsion will probably go here, but we'll see how we get on with with these as we you know go to place them. So maybe that would work out, and then that on the top there, followed by that there. This can go... Um, see, it says it requires a unit of... It says require a unit of coal every six seconds. It doesn't say requires ammo, but I assume it needs it. It doesn't actually say that. Okay, that could change things. So the maintenance bit we will place in here. We're going to place in, where would it be, in structural corridor with ladder, we'll place that there, and that now is a legitimate ship. I don't like this design though, I like the, I much prefer this being forward like that, and that fits in, and that doesn't fit in, yeah, I don't actually like that, I'm actually going to put this further back, I think that would look much better, so maybe that goes in there, that goes in there. And then these go right back like so. That would be... Yeah, it's not too bad. That's a bit better, I think, in terms of the... Yeah, okay, I like the sort of the way it sort of slopes back over. I don't like... Th this is nice and domed, nice and domed. Then we've just got a square bit here. That's not something I'm a massive fan of. We could always do something like that. And... Oh, that actually seems to work out a bit better as well. So maybe... Maybe something like that. Yeah, we'll see. Or maybe if we move this down. So, this is like, sort of suspended up, like so. Uh, let's have a look. I don't know. What's it look like on the outside? Mm, I think I'm fussing over it too much. Let's just put that there and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so it can't move. Let's res uh, fix that by propulsion and a propeller. Uh, a propeller will go in there. That's pretty much all we require there. We are too heavy to fly, so we need to sort that out. Um, what I'll do is I'll move this further back then, and I'll place another coal store there. And then we want a... where is it? It'll be in lift and a 
probably a standard suspendium chamber will fit in if we just move that a bit further back, a bit further back. And a suspendium chamber in there. It will fly. Service ceiling, 89 metres service ceiling. Okay, 89 metres is not great. It's not horrible either, but it's also not great. So what's the better option? Well, I think what I'm going to do is remove those back to there. Put that in there and then place the fire point probably more centralised. That should make a bit more sense and then allow us to connect all that. And that's a bit better pathing and I think better... Where is it? Um, better water let's have a quick look yep that's actually better okay so no crew needs more supply hatches and can't give commands to sh ship well we can because that's a bridge so we can give commands to ship once we get some crew and let's go over to our troops no actually no it's not in there over to our command and crew to the quarters and then one two three four that will give us uh, crew 48 recommended 27, but we haven't put the carrier stuff in yet, so we'll have to check that out. We need more supply hatches, which is correct. We will do that probably later on. Let's focus on the... Let's focus on the aircraft. Now, biplane hook, I can't go there, so this is going to have to be removed, put back to the back probably. So I can probably remove that then, and then place these two quarters there, although... Am I wanting to do that? I'm not too sure. Because what I'm after is essentially like a, a spine that goes down the middle here. And obviously make it quite long. And then we'll have it so we can have the hooks on the bottom. The biplane hooks on the bottom. I don't know how many we're going to have. But there's one, two, three, four. There's five there. And maybe, maybe a sixth actually. So six there. And once again I'm just going to bring this along a little bit and see already it's massively overcrewed so I'll have to remove some of these but then on the top if we go to our bomber we can place the the bombers like that and that's sort of what I was after let me remove some of these I'm gonna remove that one there as well I'm thinking just put the crew in the front like that that is not the right amount of crew but it's no actually no I think I think what we had was correct really there we go so there's one that will there's yeah that will probably do one two three a little bit over crew but we haven't got the engine and everything on the back yet and then we'll just go for straight up corridor like that Although we probably want a corridor with ladder in order to have access to up here, which is what I originally was going to do when I staggered these. So we'll have a corridor with ladder there, corridor with ladder there, corridor with ladder there, and I think that's all we need yet. Yeah, so a corridor with la oh, that's that's a corridor with ladder. So one there, one there, one there, and you can see it's giving us um, decent access up here for the crew and. I guess we'll put one there as well, and then we'll go for standard corridor to the back, followed by, I think, all we would really need is, well, we need a call star at the back for this thing. Not that we're almost certainly going to uh, move this thing very far at all, but we'll try it. Over to our, where is it? Resources. Can't see the wood for trees. Resources. Probably a small coal store will suffice. But if I place that down, uh, I think if we leave it where it was, it's fine. But we now need some supply hatches. So supply hatches can go in there. That is not enough supply hatches. So maybe put that further forward. Steel supply hatch. And still need more supply hatches. There we go. Okay. So it is technically a legitimate vessel. In terms of service ceiling, it's 35 meters and we've still got wood armor. So this doesn't actually fly nowhere near enough. There's 10 meters service ceiling. It's, yeah, you see that there. Ship's service ceiling is dangerously low. Correct. Okay, what else in lift do we have? We have a pressurized suspendium tank that we could use. And this is, well, a thing that will probably blow up after the first 
as soon as something looks at it, but that's just often what happens. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll remove these two. I'm going to put the pressurized suspendium thing there. And we want another couple of supply hatches in here, which are sadly not accessible. But if we place in those, then they are accessible and that now fits. It also lines up directly to there, so I'm actually quite happy with the aesthetics of it. So there you are. 5,028. I think I said about 5,000 to begin with, so that's all right. In terms of the blocky nature of it, it is certainly blocky, but that's generally what we end up on these things anyway. Over to our solid shapes then, and we'll try and just move that and you know, we'll place a little bit of a sloping piece there. I mean, we can't place it around here. Maybe lifting that up would give it a bit more of an aesthetic appeal. Um, do I want to place that forward or back? I think forward looks a bit better. There you go. And hopefully this won't be completely and utterly useless. We need a name for it. Let's think. Um, we'll call it the Antrim. And save the design. There we go. So that's version 1. Let's see if this is effective at all. Uh, leave over to combat and to a day fight. We'll go for a... It's not very... It's a bit of a flat landscape, isn't it? Let's see if we can get something a little bit more pleasing. No. No. I want some trees. Uh, that'll have to do. Okay, so add an airship and the... And trim, I think I've spelled that right. And it's going to go right at the back there. You can see the service ceiling is pretty good because of that. Well, it's not pretty good. It's actually terrible. But it's much better than the 10 meters because of the suspendium thing at the back there. And we're going to put this in against... Well, let's be honest. It's not going to be able to versa land for us, is it? Let's place one down and we'll see how far, well, how long it takes us to lose, and then we'll have a proper fight. So we'll start the design, uh, start the fight. I'm going to say for the aircraft, land all aircraft, and you can see the aircraft did take off, but now it is uh, heading back to base. And there is our shots going out. I'm actually going to put this on rapid fire because remember we have got an extra. 30% accuracy, I think, because of the telescope, and another 15 from the scope. So we're going to see, like I say, keep firing and just see what damage we can do. Now, the sheer amount of shots coming from this land fortress means that I don't think we're going to cause enough damage to get anywhere near a win. And we can already see that we've lost two of the biplanes that are suspended from the bottom, and in terms of damage, we have taken an immense amount of damage. So, yeah, basically, it's not going to work against this thing. Not that we expected it to, uh, to work, actually, but there you go. Uh, we've actually done a little bit of damage. Let's say, uh, let's go for normal aircraft operation and see how long it takes for the aircraft to be completely and utterly destroyed. So, you can hear them launching there, and there goes our biplane. One's dead, two's dead, three's dead... And four's dead. <laughs> There's the bombers there, which are actually... Uh, well, one's been taken out. The other one is doing its second bombing run and and has actually successfully got out. No, it's getting too close. So when it gets too close, it just falls out of the sky. And I think we've lost all weaponry. We have lost all weaponry. Yeah, okay, so that didn't work out as we sort of expected. Back over today then, and to the airship, and we're going to put that back in, but this time we're going to put it against a more reasonable four. So we're going to go for another airship, and we'll see if we can put something... Uh, the Necrosis? That's another carrier. A New York? Uh, no, I don't think that would fare too well either, because it's a bit more expensive. Sunderland, which is a carrier. Testington, definitely not. Um, probably... See, the York is about the right price. Let's put the York in. It's going to be a long-range fight. Let's, let's give it a go. So we will start the fight. I'm going to pause it because I want to zoom in and see what weapons they have. So they've got cannons on the front. But they have no... They've got triplanes and aerial hussars. So there's actually no reason for me to put the aircraft under normal operation. So I'll go for a rapid fire. 
and you can see this is just steaming towards us for some reason. There goes our... Oh, there's our planes getting shot down very, very quickly. However, we are able to drop bombs on them like so. There's the bombs going out. And also, our damage is good. Um, our... It looks like our biplanes are taking all of the aerial hazards, which they are, the aerial hazards, to be fair, have fought back and they have destroyed a couple of our planes, but the planes will be able to land and repair. However, it looks like we have done considerable damage to the York. They've taken a fairly big hit to the suspendium chamber and then there's another shot going out there. That's a fairly big hit to the suspendium chamber, which looks to be currently offline. And yeah, it's definitely offline now because it just exploded. And there's a secondary explosion there. We also have weapons on the front here. We've got four cannons, which we're not actually shooting at, but it seems to have received a bit of damage. In terms of our aircraft complement, we have two bombers still dropping bombs quite happily there, and we also have one of the biplanes. The other biplanes were taken out, I think, by the aerial hussars, so there you are. Looks like they're actually coming back to rearm and repair, so we'll have a quick zoom in and see what that's like. So they come in and they will land, and it will take almost no time whatsoever to repair and rearm these because of the repair bay and there we go the bombers are now out and heading off to to destroy this so this york here that we're versing as you can see is now pretty much on fire the stern is completely on fire and they have lost one of their weapons and bear in mind they only have four so t they've lost 25% uh, of their armament and obviously most of their damage would have Come from those triplanes and the aerial hazards, which are no longer in existence. Well, maybe they are in existence, but they're just sort of a greasy stain on the landscape over here somewhere. But that's a win. So we have managed to destroy it. Um, well, not yet, but it's 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 inevitable by the look of it. We are only on half coal, so we have more than enough weapons. It's just lost its other two weapons at the front, and it's about to be sheared in half. So this cost 200 more than our our vessel so that's pretty good to see that that worked but then again there's a reason why we went from a york to a new york because the new york is better um in terms of its uh, firepower let's go over to combat again and off to day once again to the airship and we'll put in the antrim i'm going to put that at the back like so and let's go for a land ship now in terms of a land ship what sort of thing could we realistically fight well i mean we could always place the I mean, we could place the new castle. Should we try that? Should we see what happens if we try to verse the new castle? I have a feeling that we either are going to get hit once and die twice with the missiles, or we charge straight forward and we're able to quickly destroy it. But let's go to start and then to move. And I want to move there. And this is the first test of the engines. We've never even fired these up in anger. So let's just see how slow or fast this thing happens to be. And can confirm it is on the slow side. Now, you can also hear the weapon getting launched there's the missiles coming in and that's a big hit to the central section followed by more hits on the front there we've taken substantial damage to the observation dome we've lost a couple of the hooks but we are still moving forward also you can see that the Newcastle is being bombarded we've got the bombers coming from the obviously from the top there high not really that high we better if they were well closer to that height but it's now getting it's it's, an, it's i think it's in a point where it can just shoot us it's only at the rear though and that's bad because we have got that suspendium chamber yeah so you can see we've lost that pressurized suspendium tank on the back there which has actually set a fire and i didn't actually want to go for a ram but that's actually happened uh let's go for a back up there and we are now within our basically within the minimum distance for these weapons to fire they're no longer in a state to fire which is good for us but as you can see it is oh they've had an explosion there's been an explosion aboard the new castle that's two of the missile bays taken out and it seems to be working and they've also lost all motive power so yeah it is now officially a <laughs> static structure uh, it's actually been split in two. Okay. And there goes our bomber. That's going to be a win. Now, again, that is 8,000 versus 5,000. The initial hit was extremely damaging. But we survived it. 
And that's all we needed to do. We need to survive that initial hit. So first thing I can think of then, we have lost our suspendium chamber on the back. We expected if that goes for us to fall out the sky anyway, which we did, but we are just able to keep aloft. Just able. Um, water on the back. There's, no, there's none. It's an oversight. We should place a water point in the back. So, let's... Well, I was going to say leave the fight, but that's a win, I think. See if it pops up with a win. Yeah, there's a win. Okay. Super beverage, because I've uh, been forgetting about that. Okay, over to Airship Editor. Open the design. The Antrim Man. We're going to go ahead, and it'll be in resources, in a fire extinguisher. I'm going to place a fire extinguisher. I think a fire extinguisher actually has... Does it have ladders? It does have ladders, so we'll place it there. Don't think we need any more. The question is, do I want to remove both the telescope and the observation dome? That will cheapen out by a considerable amount, and that means that we can probably get away with... I mean, do we want to do that? The question is like, well, the answer is yeah. I, I sort of don't want... I'd, ra I just, I'd rather save the money. I really would. I'm going to remove them and save the design as version 2. But version 2 may be deleted. I may, may go back to version 1 and just add in that fire point. In fact, let's let's just do that. Open the design. Uh, don't know why I'm scrolling down. And trim this one here. We'll remove that and then place in the fire extinguisher. Save the design as version 1. Save that and then... Obviously, we'll manage the files, get rid of the original Antrim, and there we go. So we now have the Antrim version 1 and version 2. Uh, leave that, and let's try probably Airship. Don't want to manage those. Version 2, then. So there's the version 2. We're going to place this at the back. Now, obviously, this is a little bit cheaper, and it also it doesn't technically have the accuracy, but I think we'll still be all right. But you know, proof is in the pudding, as they say. And we will have in a land ship, let's put a winter version 2, because winter is an amazing vessel. Realistically, that would be closer. And it's 2,400, so we need another land ship around about the same sort of cost. I think, I mean, we could go for a bomb, one of those things there, but I think instead we'll go with, good grief, the Akna Carry. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, that would be too expensive. The mini tanks would probably work out. There's the immoderate, which is just long range. I think we'd probably be alright against that. Maybe maybe a Leeds. We'll place a Leeds at the back there for long range fighting. And another land ship or two. Maybe Hazar Tank No Medusa. We'll put a Medusa in and place it around there. Okay. So that is... They're a little bit overpointed. It's not even 100 overpointed, but it's still a little bit overpointed. But we'll see what we can do. We will... Ah, this is where we have to be a bit careful because this has flak. So that's something that we're going to have to worry about. So I'm going to just say over to land all aircraft and then obviously move this thing back when we can. We can see that the Medusa is coming in as we would have expected there. I'm going to move as it gets close and then going to initiate a move forward for a couple of reasons. Firstly, this thing is close range. I want to get past it. But also I want to try and dodge these missiles, which we are... Not able to do... Oh, I think we have just missed... Oh, yeah, we have just missed those, which is good. Then we're going to initiate a movement back over. And the problem is, the aircraft we have are being taken out while on the on the landing base. So I'm going to say, initiate standard launch and see what we can do. However, the, the flak cannon is still active on the winter. So I'm not confident in this fight. And already we have lost... Oh, we've lost the weapon and... Yeah, okay, to be fair, these are three of the most... <laughs> like the way that the weapon is now autonomous, it is still firing. Yeah, if we were able to destroy that flat cannon with a couple of shots early on, it would have probably been a bit better. But to be fair, these three vessels are some of the best ones we've made. And there we go. Okay, that is a loss. Right, one more attempt then, because we didn't really... We didn't really get any sort of proper useful data off that. 
Um, airship. Let's see what we can verse. Coventry. Let's put a Coven Coventry in. And what about a Dresden? A Coventry and a Dresden. Um, airship. The Dresden. And, oh, that's a bit problematic. It will not be able to get past. It'll have to go up and around. Well, that's not my problem. And we'll have a land ship in there. And I think we'll probably go with a Leeds. And they are, again, overpointed by about 100, but it's not a problem. We will start the fight and immediately go over to a rapid fire. You can see that we have missiles coming out, all sorts of... All sorts of things there. The Dresden has lost immediately. It's lost its suspendium chamber there, which is interesting. We've, uh, we're able to just then sort of go past it a bit. That's fine. I'm going to initiate a attack on the Coventry. It seems to be the most dangerous at the moment. You can see, though, a couple of times there, I've just caught, caught a glimpse of it. The weapon is missing now because we've removed these two things and oh are they actually we're gonna get bombed the dresden's actually managed to get up and over us and that's a misplay by myself there let's get back over because ah right we've lost the pressurized suspendium that's what's happened there okay gonna back for another another fire on the dresden here and i'm gonna keep backing up because we don't have much option keep backing up keep backing up yeah, there we go. There's still some more shots. And luckily, the Dresden is now... Yep, there we go. That's good. It's lost all motive power because the propeller was taken out. And then one of the shots, I don't know if you saw there, actually hit the suspendium chamber, the remaining suspendium chamber, and took it out. So that's fine. In terms of what is left, the Coventry has lost almost all weapons and is no longer technically under control. And then we have the Leeds, which is now at the back here, which is bombarding us quite effectively so we're going to slowly go forward then and issue I, mean, this, I think this would was, it was a fairly realistic fight i mean you could see that actually happening um admittedly they didn't have any flak or anything to really take out the planes with effectively although the rockets the splash damage can do it and to be fair i mean yeah we can say we might win this but at what cost this thing's wrecked so I think it's pretty much back to the original assessment. Aircraft are expensive. They're extremely useful when the opponent does not have anything to take them out, although one could argue that about anything. But then again, a cannon's a cannon's a cannon. You know, it will always fire against whatever it's in arc of. Whereas obviously aircraft, only specific things can shoot it. When the people when, when the opponent doesn't have it, then yeah, it's it's just stupidly effective. And we've seen a couple of fights where we've been able to take out the flak or machine guns or whatever, the Gatling guns, uh, technically a defeat there, even though they're a mobile, we're all a mobile, but it is a defeat. Yeah, but we've still got planes. We would still be able to win that fight if we were able to continue it. Yeah, we've seen fights where we have taken out the 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 defences and be able to have free reign. We've seen the ones where we weren't able to, like when we versed the winter and that didn't work out. So overall then, I think drawing some conclusions from admittedly very limited data um this aircraft maintenance bay and the aircraft command deck are brilliant but in terms of cost effective carrier don't know don't know i still think that you just wouldn't be able to feel this on its own maybe remove the suspendium rear and instead Put on perhaps aerial torpedoes like that. That would be about the three of those. How much is it? 224, and each one and the suspendium ray is 496. So actually, you're probably you're only getting about two and a bit torpedoes for the same price of the ray, and the ray was very useful. Don't know whether or not we should have the telescope and the dome. From those couple of fights, it seemed that there was a lot more shots that were missing rather than hitting in terms of armor i don't know whether we just want to go back to say wooden armor which would cheapen this thing out by a considerable margin whether or not we want to remove some of the biplanes and have it cheaper or maybe even make it longer because at the end of the day you know we've got all of the ability to carry more stuff on here and there's no point in fielding two of these when you have to bring, you know, two engines, two tank, uh, two suspendium uh, tanks, the whole lot, when you can just make this a bit longer and add 
nothing else onto it, really. I mean, we'll probably have to add another dust suspension dust tank to keep it aloft, but all the command stuff's still there. Hmm. Not sure. Interesting, though. Happy with the overall performance. It's better than I expected in certain ones and worse in others. It comes down, I think, to the look of the draw. Sometimes you just don't get that hit to take the weapons out. Obviously, if you're versing static structures and they've got loads of flak, then just don't feel this. But for other things, then it actually works. And it's it's got enough armor. And with only that, I know it's only one ray, but that's good enough to take out things that uh, could realistically face. Either way, hope you have enjoyed this little mess around with airships and trying out some new designs. If you have any suggestions for changes for the Antrim, by all means let me know. If you have any suggestions for also new designs, things you think we should make, or just stuff that's interesting, then by all means pop them in the comments there. Hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, and generic partings.